Hi guys and welcome to the 30,000 mile update on my Nissan Leaf. In this video I'll be telling you what, if anything, has gone wrong with the car, any reason to take it back to Nissan and whatnot, and I'll also be checking the state of health of the batteries, which I haven't done since the 20,000 mile update video. Now we're uh, about a third of the way through the battery warranty mileage terms. There should be some sort of appreciable level of battery degradation. So uh, let's find out. Well, I might as well start with what, if anything, has gone wrong with the car. And quite frankly, over the last 31 and a half thousand miles, absolutely nothing has gone wrong with this car just like the previous video there's not a single rattle anywhere which is very crucial on a car this quiet you would notice if there was a rattle in an electric car there's been no reason to go back to Nissan there's been nothing falling off it is literally the same now as it was the day I picked it up so in reliability terms faultless I literally cannot fault it because I've just said faultless Oh, actually, there is one thing that's probably worth mentioning, which I have mentioned in the previous videos, and that's the, the arse crack problem uh, in the seat, which happened after just a few thousand miles. It's not getting any worse, it's not getting any better, and a few other people in the comments on the previous videos said they had the same issue as well. Now, the only reason I can think of that this happens is because I obviously work out and I have really strong arse muscles. It's probably worth mentioning that even though the car's on 31,500 miles, it's about two years old at this stage. So that means I've got a year's left on the, the car warranty, six years left on the battery warranty, or another just under 70,000 miles. So yeah, in terms of reliability, brilliant. Oh wait there you absolute ass. Oh, Tires at the front, they were replaced on 20,000 miles. As I said in the last video, the rears are still original on 31 and a half thousand, although I probably will be changing those in the next couple of thousand miles or so, certainly before winter. 200 pounds for the second year service, the, what they call a major service. 200 pounds on an electric car. And I know it's 300 pounds on a petrol, but ultimately all they did was plug the car in to check the state of health, change the brake fluid, because that's about the only fluid you can change, and the pollen filler. Three things. Plug in, change, change, 200 pounds. Service, just a year or so ago, was 150 pounds. <laughs> That's quite an increase for the exact same service. Just so you know, the minor service on a leaf has gone from 100 pounds, um, and then a year later, 150 pounds. So a 50% increase, will you shut up? A 50% increase in the service costs in a year for the exact same service, pretty much. I don't see how they could justify that. that. That's not good, Nissan. EVs are cheap to service, easy to service, and you're charging £200 to change the brake fluid and to check the state of health of the batteries. I think what's probably happened is someone in Nissan has thought, ooh, hang on a minute, we've designed cars now that don't really need servicing. How are we going to make the dealerships money? I know, we'll just charge them whatever we feel like and call it some sort of, ooh, service. Yes, yes, we'll do that. Right, let's check the state of health of the batteries. Now, I appreciate that I have absolutely no concept of continuity at all, but sometimes you have to film on different days. So, all I need to do the state of health is a dongle here. Pull off this panel down there, which is this thing, and plug it into the OBD2 port. Turn the car on and open up the lease by app on your tablet or phone. But what I'm interested in is the state of health, which I haven't checked since the 20,000 mile video. So it should be interesting. Now from memory it was on about 97 point something at 20,000. The car is now on 32,000 miles, so... Okay, here we are. After 32,000 miles, I have... 95.65%. That's brilliant. I'm really happy at that. Especially considering that we've just bought this car, as in the, the balloon payment at the end of the PCP. Um, this is now ours, and you kind of, I guess, 
care more about battery state of health when, when it's yours rather than when you think you might be handing it back. <laughs> Hopefully that goes some way to addressing the naysayers saying, oh well you need to replace your batteries every few years or, or whatever crap that I get bombarded with on every single video I do. Now of course, yes, this is just one car, it's not indicative of, of, of the state of health of the uh, of batteries in general, but there are a lot of people online that have the exact same sort of thing as I have here. It's a very low degradation curve. Now no doubt someone will tell me about the uh, 30 kilowatt hour study that someone did, um, which showed basically the 30s dropping off uh, more than the 24s which in some ways isn't surprising, it's basically a bigger battery in the same physical space. But Nissan have uh, updated the battery management software, or whatever it's called, to address this problem which that study highlighted. I'm not sure what it does, but ultimately when my car went in for service a few couple of weeks ago, it's, uh, it's had a, an update which, well it certainly made the guessometer more optimistic, but apparently it addresses a problem where the batteries were reading or rather the car was reading the batteries were at a lower state of health than they actually are which of course affected range so if you have a 2016 or a some 2017 30 kilowatt hour leaf yours should get or have had by now an update they typically do it when you get your service because it's not a, a an urgent update it's not it's not a, a, a call back or anything it's not a recall sorry um so if yours is a 2016 or 17 30 uh, ring Nissan up and uh, and get it booked in or just wait until it gets serviced. Whether or not that's had any effect across the board we'll, we'll just have to see but that study now I guess is it isn't, a rel it isn't relevant anymore because the car should have been updated which addresses the supposed problem. Who knows time will tell. So there we are after what 30 odd thousand miles I've lost 4.35% of my original range which is about uh, three or four miles. I expect after 100,000 miles to have lost maybe 15% of range max. So if you correct, after 100,000 miles I'll have 85% of the original range that the car came with. That doesn't mean you have to replace the batteries, that means the range is less. See with a, a petrol or diesel car, if you have a significant problem with the engine, you've got to replace the engine or the part. With an electric car, it's so simple the only issues are the batteries of course, and that just means the range reduces, not that the car stops working. Let's face it, even diesel or petrol cars are affected by, uh, by, by the same inefficiencies if you like. If you have a, a petrol or diesel car that's done 100,000 miles, it will not, not be as efficient as it was at its peak. It will have reduced range. You of course won't notice that range drop, because when a car can do six, 700 miles, if it's lost 80, 90 miles on that, you're never really going to notice. Now, how many uh, Top Gears have shown when they did a uh, rolling road that they've lost a lot of power from the engine? This will not lose power. The electric motor will always be the same now as it was when it was new and probably by the time I've done 200,000 miles. And this is the thing, they're so simple, there's so little to go wrong. The efficiency is much higher. The batteries are the only supposed weak point. So this is kind of for another video ultimately is this battery of the ice thing but all I'm saying is I have lost 4.35% in 32,000 miles uh, and I, I, I'm very very happy about that. Now if you want to know about the depreciation which is often cited as major in EV terms then have a look at this video up there which addresses the depreciation or lack of depreciation in electric cars. If you want to know about the running costs of electric cars, I've done a video about that and I'll stick that up on this corner here, which basically tells you exactly how much this car has cost me over the last two years and roughly what it might cost you. If you can, please subscribe and if you already subscribe, click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Then you can alter the notification options so you don't miss instant notifications like I'm about to start a live stream or something like that. I'm hoping to do more live streams in the near future. So uh, as always, if you've been watching, thank you and I'll see you soon.